Minutemen in the home white. Again, guys undefeated here in Amherst this season. 9-0 on this court. George Mason is in the visiting green. It's their first trip ever to UMass. The win by the Minutemen by one last month at GMU. That was the first ever meeting between the schools, believe it or not. Yeah, and it's going to be a matchup, you know, that really focuses around the guards of George Mason. You talked about him, right? And Allen, two big-time players. Also looking for that matchup. Caddy Lalane and, uh, and the freshman Jalen Jenkins were really battling down low, so we'll see who gets the upper hand in this one. It'll be Jalen Jenkins jumping center for the Patriots against Raphael Putney of UMass. Dwayne Gladden throws the ball up. Putney wins the tip. Jazz Williams to Samson Carter. He attacks and banks it in. How about that start, guys? It took fewer than 10 seconds to win a tip and to have Chaz Williams assist on a Samson Carter basket. Two to nothing, the Minutemen. Into the post, they're going to go to the guard. Marquise Moore, the freshman, kicks it out for Allen. Brian Allen for three at the top. It's too strong. And a rebound by Caddy Lalane. Here comes UMass up by two. Williams will push to the front court. 30 seconds in. And now to Putney. Putney's pass is stolen by Allen. Breaks the other way and lays it in with his right hand. Boy, that senior, Brian Allen, has turned himself into one of the best guards in the A-10 quietly, and that ties the game at two. And a guy that averaged under 10 points a game, now one of the best scorers in the league this year. What a jump from his junior to senior year. Samson Carter had the early basket for UMass. He finds Gordon cutting through in the middle, had the shot blocked by Jenkins. Rebound by Caddy Lalane, but he had it knocked away and stolen. Grabbed by the other senior guard, Sherrod Wright. But Derek Gordon had that blocked by Jalen Jenkins. Talked about when I read to the lineups, Jalen Jenkins, in his first year playing for George Mason, since conference play began, he's turned into one of the best big men in the league. Got the block, and now George Mason looking for the lead, but they won't get it as Sherrod Wright travels at the top of the key. 18.42 on the first half clock. And kind of a sloppy start for both teams. Yeah. UMass got the first bucket. They kind of ran Raphael Putney down the right sideline as a decoy off the tip and got Samson Carter a look after that. One of those live ball turnovers, though. And that's how G George Mason got their first bucket. And now they're going to drop back are the Patriots into a 2-3 zone. Chaz Williams walks it slowly across the time stripe, finds Derek Gordon. Gordon slashing through against the zone, passes out of the reach of Caddy Lalane and over the baseline, out of bounds for a turnover. Yeah, a, a nice play by Derek Gordon, split that wing. The high and low man on the zone, Caddy Lalane, was just not ready for the pass at all. Wasn't looking, another turnover for UMass. Minute men and Patriots tied at two. George Mason, as we look at it, moving left to right. Sherrod Wright, 26 points against UMass last month. Into the post he goes. This is the big man, Copes. Copes shoots over Lalane and Putney and gets it to drop. Boy, that was tough. When you've got Caddy Lalane's outstretched arms and Raphael Putney's outstretched arms in front of you, to hit a five-foot fadeaway is tough. Four to two, George Mason, Copes' first basket. 18 minutes to go in the half. Eric Copes does not score much, only averaging three and a half per game. Minute men against the zone look sluggish. At the top, it's Raphael Putney to Gordon, right wing. Now cross court to Williams in the left corner. Pump fakes and finds Putney at the top. He'll step into a three, and he knocks it in. That's that beautiful jump shot. Putney gets the perfect release, high arc and a swish. Now Putney with the feet set, takes a while to let it go, but Chaz, a nice extra pass. Could have taken a quick one in the left wing. Hit his teammate right at the top of the key. Putney makes it 5-4 minute men. Jumper for two by Moore. No good, but he got fouled on the release by Chaz. Williams hit the arm of Marquise Moore on a 15-foot jumper. Chaz has an early personal, Jason, and it's Marquise Moore going to the line. Yeah, Chaz has got to be more careful than that, guys. You know, as he went up, he was kind of off balance. You let him shoot it. You know, it doesn't look like it's going in. If he makes a tough two, then, you know, you give him credit. Jazz definitely doesn't want to get in foul trouble, especially early on in the game. Yeah, and foul trouble was really one of the themes in the first matchup, you think about UMass's top four big guys. Four times five is what, 20? They had 18 total fouls between them. Two guys fouled out. Yep. Two guys had four fouls. Putney and Lalane fouled out. So Derek Kellogg had to earn his money in that one, rotating guys through on and off the bench. Moore made the first free throw. Second one rattles in and out. Rebounded by Samson Carter for UMass. The score now tied at five. 17-15 left. A lob by Gordon is over the head of Putney and out of bounds. Derek Gordon's thrown a couple of passes that went straight out of bounds here in the opening two minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah, a little bit out of yeah. sync there and uh, miscommunication between him and Putney. Yeah, UMass may be looking for a foul, but it's almost kind of like that football analogy, you know, uncatchable ball. <laughs> Pick up the flag. Yeah. George Mason with the score tied at five. 
They've got Sherrod right at the top over Putney for three. It hits nothing but net. Beautiful looking jumper by Sherrod Wright. And that makes it eight to five Patriots. Well, he can shoot it from out there. 16.50 to go. Gordon, pass underneath for Caddy Lalane. Off his hands, out of bounds. Three turnovers on Derek Gordon passes. All three of them going into the inside, and none of them caught. I think that's in the last three or four possessions. Back comes George Mason. Allen inside the arc for two. He missed it short. Rebound grabbed by Brian Allen. He chased his miss, put it back over Caddy Lalane. It's an air ball. Caddy stood his ground, and a rebound by Putney. Eight to five, Mason. Putney up ahead to Williams, now back to Raphael. On the right wing, he pump fakes and goes right to the rack, but he missed the layup. Putney shot it off the back of the rim, a rebound by Jenkins. Jenkins up ahead, it's gonna be a pass to Wright, who dumps it in. And that's gonna bring a timeout from Derek Kellogg. It was Allen who found his senior teammate, Sherrod Wright, for a right-handed dunk, and it's 10 to five. George Mason leads with 16, 18 to go in the half. Let's keep it here, it'll be a 30. Yeah, Tim, getting back to uh, Derek Gordon's turnover, as a former player, you know, when you get the ball past the foul line, you just kind of go up with that nice little floor, yeah. that's his game. The big guys aren't used to getting those quick, jerky, unlooked passes, you know, and it's not really their, their fault. As soon as he gets by, he's just got to explode, go right to the rim. Yeah, and it was really almost a mirror image he did on the left side, then the right side, just trying to split the zone, you're right, dump it down and carry the lane, but both times he's got to realize He's got a little, he's good at that little floater. He's got it going offensively in his last three games. You know, put up a shot. You can't fault the kid for trying to make a play, but you got to be a little bit smarter now that you've done it two or three times. George Mason on a run here. They've gotten a three-pointer and a dunk from Sherrod Wright, part of this 6-0 run. Derek Kellogg calls an early timeout with his team trailing 10-5. And I think Paul Hewitt sticking with a plan that I think most teams probably should against UMass. They struggle against that zone. A lot of teams switch back and forth between man and zone, but he comes right out in the 2-3 to start the game, and the UMass offense is struggling right now. Glad that you're with us. Our radio audience across the state on the UMass Sports Network, and special welcome to those of you watching tonight on the Atlantic 10's digital network anywhere in the country. Our video watchers just took a look at the replay of Sherrod Wright's dunk that prompted Derek Kellogg's timeout. Minutemen inbound out of it. They bring Trey Davis in for Derek Gordon, Maxi Esho in for Samson Carter. They took out Gordon after those early turnovers. Chaz Williams has the ball with 16 minutes to go in the half. He'll drive right around Marquise Moore. Had the shot blocked by Copes, though. Copes came to meet him. Rebound George Mason. Sherrod Wright coming back. Trying to extend a six-point run right underneath Eric Copes. Guarded by Esho. Now Lalane switches onto him. Pass out of it goes to Wright. And Sherrod Wright travels. Yes, he did. It took about a step and a half, actually, before he dribbled that ball. Turnover by the senior, and that brings us to a timeout. 15.46 remaining, first half. George Mason, offensive rebound by the new man, Johnny Williams. And Williams lays it in. Holloway is a three-point sniper who comes off of Paul Hewitt bench. He missed his first one from long range, but Williams cleaned up. It's 15 to 10. Three by Trey Davis. And that one answers for the left wing. He's been shooting it better than at any point in his two-year UMass career of late. Minutemen get back-to-back -back threes and trail 15-13 with 13.35 left. Quick trigger there by Trey. A good ball fake by Chaz to get the defender. Running toward him, got Trey a wide open look on the left wing. Driving in, Marquise Moore, shot over Bergantino is good, counted, and a foul. And the freshman Marquise Moore with a nice take to make it 17-13. Bergantino fouled him on the shot with 13-22 remaining in the half. Yeah, and Tim, there we, there, there's another example of Max. He got caught too low on the on the post and got the foul. And Tyler's got to step up more. He's got to get up to the free throw line to make him either go around him or pass the ball. Once you get past that little, you know, kind of arc circle, it's just, it's just too low. Yeah, and the UMass offense has finally got it going. Now five and nine from the floor, three or three from long range. They just can't get a stop on the other end. George Mason throwing the ball inside, driving the ball as part of their offense and really doing a good job. Getting a high percentage looks, already a couple and ones. And Patriots putting points on the board early, already 18. Not even 17 minutes, seven minutes into the game. Moore makes the free throw. So they've had a couple of old fashioned three point plays here in recent minutes. Marquise Moore has four points. 18 13 Patriots. 13 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the half. Against the zone defense, UMass Samson Carter lobs into Caddy Lalane, who's being doubled as he caught it, but also fouled as he caught it. They get Johnny Williams for bodying up Caddy with a non shooting foul. Yeah, a little bit of a tough pass, tough angle by Samson Carter, but rarely do things happen poorly for you. Just at least try to get the ball inside. At least that time they get it to Caddy. 
The double team comes, he gets fouled. Fresh 35 for the Minutemen. They trail by five. Have been down by as many as six. Under 13 minutes to go. Chaz Williams has had a good start. He's got the ball, hands it back for Trey Davis. And now to Gordon. Gordon cutting through the middle. Gordon pump fix underneath Holloway. Shot no good. Rebound underneath. Grab by Caddy Lalane, who puts it up. No good with a left. And a rebound tipped back out by Gordon. And a third chance. It'll be Trey Davis. I don't know how Caddy's putback didn't go in. But the Minutemen have it again, down by five. Chaz Williams cross court to Derek Gordon. Gordon now, Trey Davis, top of the key, guarded by Brian Allen. Samson Carter comes to set a screen. Now he rolls and gets a pass from Trey. Now Gordon cross court to Williams. Chaz, the three point shot is short. Minutemen missed three shots on that possession. And Patrick Holloway has a defensive rebound for the Patriots. They can get their largest lead of the game here. Holloway with 12 10 left. Pass to the big man Johnny Williams for two outside of his range. It's no good. And Samson Carter tips the rebound to Trey Davis. Here come the Minutemen. Davis, nice pass to Carter. One more to Gordon. Floater right baseline is good. I really liked Samson Carter's extra pass there. And Gordon in the score column. It's now 18 15, George Mason. Yeah, just good execution on the fast break. Kept the ball in the middle of the floor. Good things happen. Allen underneath, pass to Williams, had it knocked away, going up by Chaz Williams, but out of bounds. I don't know if you'd credit him with a block, because I think Chaz almost got his hand on the ball before a shot attempt by big Johnny Williams. So George Mason will keep it when we come back. Chaz Williams for UMass already three points and four assists. UMass, though, trailing George Mason, 18-15. 11 minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the opening half. This Atlantic 10 contest in the A-10. Through nine games, George Mason 1-8, UMass 6-3. Minutemen trying to tie in the conference standings for third place. I had said second place earlier. Try to tie for third place behind St. Louis and the winner of the VCU-George Washington game. It was 20 years ago tomorrow right here at the Mullen Center after one of those epic Temple UMass games back in the mid-90s that seemed to happen every year, that John Cheney, the longtime head coach of the Owls, marched into John Calipari's press conference and, well, threatened some physical violence, a national incident as it turns out, and I can't believe it was 20 years ago, yeah. almost to the date. Jason, you were on the Minutemen at that point. What do you remember? Well, first, thanks for dating me, Josh. Boy, do I feel old. But um, I wasn't in the press conference, but I was in the locker room, and, and Coach Cal came back in after that happened, and he knew something was wrong because he was always perfectly dressed to the tee, and his hair was all screwed up, his shirt was kind of undone. And he goes, guys, uh, it's Coach Cheney just lost it. I don't know what I did or what happened, but he was a little frustrated with the fact that we won and stuff, and, and everything's okay, and just we're going to have you guys go out one door, and they're going to go out a different door. And, you know, it's uh, when I woke up this morning, I saw that. It's unbelievable, 20 years ago today. Inbound to Patrick Holloway for a three-pointer. It's good for George Mason's sniper. Holloway, they just ran an underneath inbounds play designed to get him that three. He makes it, and it's 21-15. George yeah. Mason by six. And Holloway, third best scorer on this team, by far the best shooter from long range, 43%. Knocked it down, good design play. Trey Davis for the Minutemen has the ball. If you're watching on our video screen, that score is wrong. It's 21-15. Driving Sampson Carter in amongst two defenders. And he got fouled. He forced it in right at the new big man, Marko Gujanicic. The Serbian fouled Sampson, and Sampson's going to get a couple of free throws. 11-16 remaining in the opening half. Again, 21-15. George Mason matching its largest lead. They've had three-pointers now from Sherrod Wright and Patrick Holloway, the sophomore who hit the last one. I think back to that John Chaney, John Calipari incident from 20 years ago as Carter misses short on the first free throw and I was actually living in Philadelphia at the time so we got the Philadelphia media perspective on it. Yeah I'll, I'll tell you I can remember this though I, the next time we went down the temple we got off the bus there was about 20 cops lined up from when we got off the bus into the into the building just so there was nothing that you know went wrong but you know those guys made up after that they're friends now and you know it's uh it happens in the heat of the moment unfortunately guys sometimes. Both free throws missed by Samson Carter, who's well over 70% on the year at the line. Rebound George Mason. They can extend their largest lead of the game with a basket here. 11 minutes to go in the half. Copes at the foul line extended. Big man back in there. Blocked a couple of shots early for the Patriots. Copes gets it back for Brian Allen, the senior point guard. 
Cope sets the screen for Allen, who moves around Trey Davis. Eight on the shot clock. They'll get a reset with Jalen Jenkins. Jenkins' pass goes to Wright. Sherrod Wright takes it at Caddy Lalane. Bank shot, no good. Caddy stood his ground on a rebound by Carter. Sands it up to Williams, now to Gordon. One more to Trey Davis in the left corner. A three is up and good. Wow. Trey Davis, his second three already. 21-18. UMass trails by three with ten and a half to go. And that's all triggered by a quick outlet, getting the ball up the floor. A very tough pass by Derek Gordon. Cross court right on point to Trey Davis in the left corner. Right for two on the other end. No good over Gordon. Rebounded by Copes, though, offensive. Fresh shot clock. They'll reset Holloway on the drive. Dips in. Tried to throw it underneath. Pass got tipped out of bounds by Sampson Carter. Holloway probably got bailed out when Sampson tipped that ball because he didn't have anywhere to go. 29 on the Mason shot clock. They lead by three. Trey Davis, the hot shooting continues. Yeah. Probably the quickest release on the team. It had to be quick to get that one off, but he's made two from just about the same spot. Start this game. Six points off the bench to give them some early offense. Brian Allen had it knocked out of bounds. Trey Davis got his hands on it, knocked it into the UMass bench. Now 25 on the shot clock. And how about this, Tim? The last five games, Trey Davis is 12 of 22 on threes. That was before the two he's made. So now he's hit 14 of his last 24 three-point shots. Yeah, and it's, a, it's a, no wonder UMass is playing the way they are. They've gotten Derek yep. Gordon going. They've continued the the good play from Trey Davis. Plus the way he's shooting the ball. I mean, last year it was a little, you know, ten, ten, you know, kind of the shots. This year he's shooting it with such confidence, and it looks like it's going in right when he, when it goes off his hands. They had a wet spot on the court, so a little delay before George Mason can inbound here. Almost exactly midway through the first half, they mop up the perspiration. Mason has the ball with a 21-18 lead. Brian Allen throws to the foul line for Jalen Jenkins, a jumper over Carter. No good short. Rebound tipped off the hands of Copes and controlled by UMass, Caddy Lalane. And now here comes Trey Davis across midcourt. Davis, crossover dribble inside the arc, pass to the corner for Carter. Sampson takes it left baseline, spins, forced it up and in off the glass. And I do mean he forced it, kind of willing that basket home. 21 to 20, George Mason. Yeah, almost didn't get the shot off and, to and a ton he of contact. He spun between them and just kind of nipped his way through there. He got to go. I don't think that's the way you draw it up, but it worked. Jumper by Wright on the other end. Banked it no good. Wright misses again. And the rebound underneath snatched by Caddy Lalane in traffic. Minutemen look for the lead as Lalane goes up to Williams. Williams finds Davis right side. Another three by Trey. No good. Too strong. And the rebound is tipped by Copes to Patrick Holloway for the Patriots. And Trey probably should have just pulled right up and shot it. He hesitated, pump faked, and then shot it. Never really had a rhythm on that one. George Mason by one as Brian Allen takes a three and hits it over Derek Gordon at the other end. Brian Allen's second hoop, 24 to 20 Patriots. That was a tough shot. Gordon is a big guard defending it. 8.45 to go in the half. It's George Mason's third three-point make in five attempts. That's why they lead by four on the road. Under 8.35 to go as Davis dribbles at the top of the key, picks it up. And finds Sampson Carter, right wing, he's open, so takes the three, and Sampson swishes it in. 24-23, George Mason by one, and then Caddy Lalane and Eric Copes, the two big men, got tangled up after that shot went in. Referee Dwayne Gladden blows a whistle to warn them, but no penalties. And Sampson Carter with three field goals early, leading UMass with seven points now. And he's going to be a big key to how far this team goes this year. You know, we talk about the great play. The backcourt is playing so well now. Putney's getting it together, and Caddy's a force inside. But you need those secondary and, you know, third, fourth, fifth players to play well as you go forward And Sampson Carter. Having a little flashback to early in the year, the way he's scoring the ball early in this one especially if he's making three-point shots. Into the post, they're going to go with Sherrod right over Gordon. Bank shot, no good. Good defense by Derek Gordon, and he grabs the rebound off Wright's miss. Gordon to Williams, who's wide open left corner, a three. Hits the back of the rim by Chaz, and Copes secures the defensive rebound for the Patriots. Under eight minutes to go in the half, 24-23 GMU. Across midcourt, Marquise Moore, freshman guard, finds Copes cutting in. Bank shot got blocked by Caddy Lalane. And Caddy grabs the rebound, gets it up to Davis, looking for the lead all the way. Left-handed shot, no good. Trey misses, rebound by George Mason, Sherrod Wright. Trey Davis actually is much better from three-point range than he is from two of late. Putney blocks Holloway, but then Holloway had to go right back into his hands, and he puts it in. 26-23 Patriots. 
Putney gets it from Davis for three on the other end, and he bricks it, no good. Only hit the backboard, shot missed off to the left. Rebound pulled down by Copes for GMU. An ugly miss by Putney. So the Patriots lead by three. 7-15 left, here comes Marquise Moore. He'll find Jalen Jenkins driving on Putney underneath him, shot no good. Putney gets the rebound that time. Now Raphael had to block the last possession down the court. That time he gets a defensive rebound. Here comes Chaz Williams trailing 26-23. Williams splits a couple of defenders and kicks to Davis, right wing for three. Rattles in and out. Would have been his third of the half. Rebounded by George Mason, Eric Copes. Now UMass is kind of getting three-point happy. Well, that's why, you know, the three-point ball for a team in UMass that doesn't shoot a lot can be a little bit of fool's gold if they go in early. Yeah, and both teams are really windy right now, and I think Paul, he was trying to get a timeout. And he does. Yeah, they had gone over two minutes without a whistle. And so a 30-second timeout taken by Coach Hewitt. We'll keep it here. It's a 30 with George Mason leading UMass. 26-23, six minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the half, and now with the Minutemen missing a couple of shots, George Mason trying to establish a two-possession lead. Yeah, and UMass made five of their first seven from long range. They're seeing a lot of that 2-3 zone from George Mason. And, you know, to kind of continue my point from before, you, you know, you made a couple early. They're kind of bonus buckets for you. You don't usually make a ton of threes if you're UMass, one of the lowest three-point shooting make teams in the league per game. But, you know, just because you made a few early, you don't want to get two three point happy against that zone and, and chuck up bad shots. You got to continue to try to get the ball inside, try to get some dribble penetration. You know, if you get a three out of your yeah. offense, take it, but don't force it. And UMass started sluggish, but I mean, they had probably four turnovers in maybe the first four or five minutes. They only have one really in the last five or six minutes, so that's good. You know, George Mason, you know, they, they're trying to win this game. You know, they're still fighting and scrapping in the uh, Atlantic 10, and uh, you know, UMass got to be careful here. George Mason is the newest member of the A-10. They joined this past summer after the conference loss to Temple, Butler, Charlotte, Xavier, two other leagues. Bernadette McGlade, the commissioner, added George Mason this year and Davidson next year. Driving Marquise Moore out of the timeout, layup no good. Bergantino came in for Caddy Lalane and alternate. But they get an offensive rebound with Copes. Now he goes to the baseline, Moore, and Moore had it blocked by Putney again. And this time UMass gets the defensive rebound. Putney, these last couple weeks, has become a shot-blocking machine. Here's Putney from Williams inside the arc. Fouled, shot does not drop. Putney got hit by Copes. That'll bring us to the belated under eight timeout. They say that Putney's shot would have counted had it gone in. There was an active shooting foul on Copes, his first. So now we've got a timeout under eight, 6.17 to go. Before the half, it's 26-23, George Mason. More Minutemen basketball after this timeout. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud new partner of Learfield Sports. It's current Baltimore Ravens safety, James DeHedebo. to come back to take in this hoops game, and we're going to visit with James DeHedebo at halftime. Looking forward to speaking with him. He played a year for Mark Whipple back when he was a, a youngster playing for the Minutemen. Be interested to get James Ahedebo, the hard-hitting safety in the NFL, past several seasons with the Ravens before that, with the Patriots before that, with the Jets. He's been on a lot of successful teams in his young professional career. Interested to hear what he thinks about Coach Whipple coming back to take over the program. James has already earned a reputation from being an undrafted guy to becoming one of the best hitting yeah, safeties I mean, I mean, in the NFL. I mean, what a stretch he had, Tim. I mean, I, he's one of those guys, I don't want to go across the middle and then get hit by him, do you? Yeah, and Abba just keeps ending up on good Winning teams, teams playing for the, team. the Jets, yeah. the Pats, and yeah. the Ravens. That's a pretty good, pretty good trio to be playing on if you want to win some games. Now they changed it. Non-shooting foul before the timeout, so no free throws for UMass. I thought that was the correct call, too. Putney looked like he got fouled before his shot. Six minutes to go in the half. 26-23 Mason. And the Minutemen have the ball. It'll be Trey Davis against the zone. Finds Gordon on the left wing. Gordon pump fakes, takes a two, and air balls it. He shoots it two feet over the rim. Rebound by Marquise Moore for the Patriots. Each team has cooled off the past couple of minutes. But Gordon, who's been shooting so well recently, not so in the first half tonight. Just one of four. Jumper for three is good by Vaughn Gray, who didn't even play the first time these teams met a month ago. Just came in at the timeout for Coach Hewitt. And Vaughn Gray hits for three. It's 29-23, George Mason. Back come the Minutemen. Bergantino sets a screen for Williams. Jazz pass to the baseline. Intended for Gordon, knocked away, but out of bounds. Minutemen keep. Good hustle there. 
by George Mason. It was Eric Copes who knocked it out of bounds with 5.20 to go in the half. And how about the bonus bucket by Vaughn Gray? A guy that can't shoot a little bit. That was his 10th three of the year. But no hesitation by the big wing, just pulling up, knocking it down. George Mason now four of six from three-point range. That's how you get an upset. On the road, you make a lot of long-range shots. They foul Putney on the inbounds pass, non-shooting foul. Holloway had a size disadvantage, so Patrick just reached in and fouled Putney. There have been four fouls whistled against each team in a relatively whistle-free first half. Yeah, UMass has used that type of play more on their underneath and side out of bounds. They kind of find a mismatch and try to post them up right out of it. This time, Gray's going to pick up Putney so it doesn't happen again. And a minute inbound. George Mason has matched its largest lead of the game at six, approaching five minutes to go. Trey Davis trying to draw a foul on a three-point shot. Leans into the defender, Johnny Williams. The ball comes out of Trey's hands. No foul is whistled. It goes out of bounds. And they say last touched by Trey. That's that crafty move that Trey uses where he pump fakes, tries to lean into his defender, and the officials didn't give him a call. Yeah, a lot of contact there, but they're letting a a lot going game. Chaz, Chaz loves that. You know, he usually gets a call, but not, not this time for, uh, for Trey. And on the other end, Johnny Williams attacking Caddy Lalane, looking for an eight or nine point lead are the Patriots. As UMass is in a drought here. 5 0 run by George Mason. Into the post they go. Sherrod Wright banks it up and in. Sherrod Wright's seventh point. And it's 30 to 23, Mason. I don't think anybody here at the Mullen Center really expected this. Four and a half minutes to go in the opening half, an eight-point deficit. Although if you watched the game four weeks ago in Fairfax, I guess you could have expected it. Yeah, and you watched uh, Mason take St. Louis to overtime on their home floor. They're not a bad team. Chaz Williams in traffic. Bank shot in and out. Rebound grabbed by Putney, though, underneath. Putney muscling in a couple of defenders, and he got fouled. It was either Marquise Moore or Jalen Jenkins. They both looked like they had a hand around Putney. They're going to call Moore a non-shooting foul. And that bank shot by Chaz Williams went in and out. It looked like there was a lid on the cylinder. Yeah, and, and you know, you go back to, to Mason's record, they're one and eight in the league, but as I mentioned, took St. Louis to overtime at Chaffetz Arena, lost by two on the road at Rhode Island. Putney going to the rim, left-handed hook, no good, but he's knocked to the ground and foul. Two shots, and I'm sure of it this time for Raphael Putney, who made an aggressive move. With 4.09 remaining in the half, Johnny Williams Backup big man for the Patriots just got his second foul. A good aggressive move by Putney getting to the rim. He missed a layup last time he made that move. This time at least gets to the free throw line, draws some contact. And not a ton of flow to this game, even though both teams started shooting the ball well early on. They very much slowed down at this point. And shooting percentage is starting to drop. UMass has already missed their first free, three free throws as well. Putney misses the first. Samson Carter had an empty trip earlier. UMass in recent weeks for a team that was very good at the stripe early in the year. They've been significantly worse. Second shot is good by Putney. But there you go, Raphael. He hit a three-pointer earlier, his fourth point of the night. That ends in over four minutes scoring drought for UMass. They trail by seven, 31-24. Four minutes to go in the half. George Mason has the ball with Marquise Moore dribbling out with a left hand to the left of midcourt. We'll have immediate timeout at the next whistle. Marquise Moore looking inside. This is Jalen Jenkins posting Samson Carter. He got doubled by Caddy Lalane. And Jenkins passes out of it back to Marquise Moore with eight on the shot clock. Moore takes it around Chaz Williams for a two-point jumper. It spins in and out, but Williams unboxed out, puts it up and in. That's Johnny Williams. And it's a nine-point lead. 33-24 George Mason with three and a half minutes to go. And nobody put a body on Johnny Williams. So back comes Chaz Williams. Chaz taking it at Allen to Trey Davis. Right wing for three. It's no good. He's missed three in a row from out there. Rebound grabbed by Brian Allen for the Patriots. Over five minutes without a field goal for the Minutemen. Allen all the way. Goes up, gets fouled across the arm by Samson Carter. And Allen will get two free throws. He's one of the best in the conference. If he makes each of them, it's going to be an 11-point George Mason lead when we come back. 3.07 to go in the first half. This is... I'm sure frustrating for UMass fans, players, and coaches alike. Another slow start. 33-24 GMU. Back with the conclusion of the first half after this. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud partner of Learfield Sports. Hi. 
UMass has been a come from behind team in Atlantic 10 games. The Minutemen are going to have to try to do it again tonight. They trailed by nine, could be 10 or 11 momentarily as Brian Allen for George Mason is about to take a couple of free throws. With just over three minutes remaining in the first half, the Patriots 33, the UMass Minutemen 24. Coming up at halftime, an interview with head coach Derek Kellogg for you listeners on the radio and you viewers on our Atlantic 10 digital network stream. You'll get DK's thoughts. Of course, James Ahedabo's interview, stats highlights, and the out-of-town scoreboard early on in that big game for second place at VCU. It's the Rams all over UMass's Saturday opponent, George Washington. Jason, we were talking before the game tonight. You really liked VCU in that game. Yeah, I mean, and, and we joked, but I said there was absolutely, there's no way. After after they lost to St. Joe's, they're just, there's no way they're going to lose at home. And GW's a good team, but there's, they're not getting that W. So go VCU right now. Yeah, and VCU so good. They're undefeated at the Seagull Center this yeah. year. And by the way this one started against GW, they're going to stay that way. Brian Allen, an 84% free throw shooter, makes the first of two. And so it's the first double-digit lead of the game right now. 34-24. Allen now with his sixth point. Sherrod Wright has seven points. So it's that backcourt senior tandem leading the way. Now the seventh point for Allen. He does make them both. And what do you know? It is 35-24, George Mason by 11. And kind of eerily similar to the way that first game started. UMass started the game with some turnovers. And George Mason got their guards going and took over on the offensive glass. They've already got seven offensive rebounds in this game. So UMass got to get it turned around. They have not scored a field goal in five and a half minutes. Inside, Caddy Lalane got fouled from behind on an entry pass from freshman Demetrius Dyson. And they're going to call the foul against Johnny Williams, who has not played much, but has three fouls now off of Paul Hewitt's bench. One and one for Caddy. That's the seventh against the Patriots in the half. 11 to one run, guys, for the Patriots since the eight and a half minute mark. UMass has only one point. And Samson Carter hit that three from the right wing. That's been the only offense since for UMass. And at least a different idea that time. Dyson comes in the game, the freshman. Not the easiest pass in the world. Didn't take the best angle, but the right idea. Getting it into the post. UMass had missed a couple from long range. At least they try to go a little more high percentage getting it into their big man. And Caddy Lalane makes the front end of the one and one. Now the second shot. Missed it short. Rebounded by Copes, who's in there for Williams. Minutemen are, after that, one of two trip. Now just two of five. Two of six at the foul line, 35-25 underneath. Nice move, Jalen Jenkins banks it in. It's a 12-point game. Jalen Jenkins, the redshirt freshman, scores with 2.40 left. UMass is getting blown out at the end of the first half by the last place team in the conference at the moment. Jazz Williams to Putney on the left wing. Studies, shoots the three. That's off to the left, no good. Rebound Brian Allen for George Mason. He'll get it up ahead to Holloway. A deep three is up off the back of the rim by Holloway. Probably not the best shot for the Patriots. Rebound long to Chaz Williams. He'll take it right to the rack. In traffic, banks it in and a foul. A tough shot as he was getting knocked to the hardwood. UMass's first field goal in six plus minutes. Moore was throwing him down to the ground. That'll make it 37-27. Yeah, and that you look might look back at this game. That could be a big swing point right there. Holloway went for a dagger. On a quick three in transition to make it a 15-point lead, he misses it. And if Chaz can get three here, that's a, you know, essentially a six-point swing. UMass might try to set up a little press here. They're going to bring in the other freshman, Berger, so they're going to have freshman and Dyson in here, so maybe a couple athletes to get in and set up some press. Yeah, you got a much smaller lineup, so hopefully Chaz will knock this down and uh, get a turnover on the press. He makes the free throw. Now they'll set up the press. That makes it 37-28. Chaz Williams, old-fashioned three-point play. So UMass had scored only two points in about the previous six minutes and 20 seconds. Yeah, UMass is in a man-to-man press right now. Seth Berger in there guarding the ball. Jalen Jenkins enters it in. Got it to Brian Allen. Allen up to Jalen Jenkins, and he'll dribble across, harassed by Dyson. Now the pass to Holloway, who got open for three, and he nails it. Wide open three, and the lead is back to 12. Patrick Holloway's second. Two minutes to go in the half, 40 to 28 Mason. 
Well, that time they beat the press with ease. Chaz Williams around the Samson Carter screen. Two point jumper is good. Chaz with five straight for UMass, and now it's 40 to 30. Well, Chaz taking control a little here. He knows he's the best scoring option on the floor. He scored five in a row. Driving back across the press is Sherrod Wright. Wow. Easy basket and foul. Again, they beat the press with no problem. He went right at Samson Carter, and Wright banks it in, plus the foul on Carter. That'll make it 42 to 30 with 138 to go in the half. And Jason, he can't fault Derek Kellogg for putting on some press, trying to get the game, you know, going, maybe get some turnovers, but talk about disaster on the first couple. They find their best three-point shooter in transition in Holloway. He knocks it down, then they get a layup in an and one. Yeah, and I know we haven't talked about this a lot, guys, but when Max Asia went out with two fouls early on, I mean, he's your energizer. They really haven't had him in there. And, you know, really, Josh, like you've said, they haven't been in this game at all. You're right, Esho had two fouls in a span of about 10 seconds early in the half. Free throw, no good by Wright, and a rebound by Putney. Remains a 12-point lead for George Mason, matching the largest. Three-pointer, Chaz Williams, that short left wing. Rebound tipped by Dyson off of a George Mason player and out of bounds. The freshman, Demetrius Dyson, keeping that Chaz Williams miss alive. Fresh 35 for UMass with exactly 90 seconds remaining in the half. They're trailing by 12. The inbound to Chaz Williams on the right wing. Cross court to the freshman Berger. Now he throws to fellow freshman Dyson, who bobbled but retrieved near midcourt. Dyson from Tennessee gets it to Chaz Williams at the top, guarded by Allen, senior on senior. And now Berger into Caddy Lalane. Caddy has a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Copes. Right-handed hook, no good from about four feet out. And Eric Copes gets the defensive rebound. George Mason can get its largest lead of the game with any point. They lead 42 to 30 with a minute remaining in the first half. Copes in the high post, passes for Holloway around a screen by Copes, a deep two point jumper that spins in and out. Rebound tipped by Putney and Berger and it's Raphael Putney controlling for UMass. So here come the minute men, a two for one if they take a quick shot. Chaz Williams trying to get the pass from Putney but it's knocked out of bounds by the hustling Brian Allen. 44 seconds left in the half, 28 on the shot clock. So. At the moment, really, Tim, the two-for-one kind of gone. Yeah, they tried to go for a little quick hitter there, just miscommunication between Putney and Williams. But at least they'll hang on to the ball here. Minutemen trailing by 12. As 40 seconds are left in the half, Chaz Williams gets it to Putney right wing. Putney harassed by Allen. Now back to Williams. George Mason has played just about a perfect half on the road. Williams. To his left, finds Dyson. Demetrius Dyson for three. It's way too strong. But a rebound by Caddy Lalane. Goes back up under the rim and lays it in. UMass needed that. It's 42 to 32 with 15 seconds left. Yeah, big time rebound by Caddy Lalane. The freshman misses the three. And he does his work on that right side block, getting his big paw on the ball and finishing, cutting it back to 10. Five seconds left. George Mason's Allen pushes off on Chaz Williams as he started his drive and gets an offensive foul. Extended the arm, I thought, and they caught Allen for it. It was the lead official who's under the basket, Mark Schnur, making the call. Yeah, and UMass has a chance to put a big dent in this league, in this lead if they can get a bucket here. Derek Kellogg's going to get a three-point shooter and Trey Davis back in the game. In case they have a top opportunity to get a quick shot, if they can score five points, four points in this series, it could be a big swing. And it's only three seconds left, Tim. They're going to inbound in their own backcourt, so it'll have to be a quick trigger. 3.2 to be exact, as Putney gets set to inbound right next to his head coach. Trailing 42-32, it's into Williams. Williams rushes up to the front court, a three-pointer, no good at the buzzer. Falling away on the right wing. George Mason by 10. And we'll see if the Cardiac Minutemen have another one in them in the second half tonight. A late lead slip away, in fact, for the Minutemen, of their six Atlantic 10 wins, four of them they've trailed in the final four minutes of the game. So this is not unfamiliar to this UMass team, which puts out the starting five to begin the second half. Williams and Gordon in the backcourt, Carter and Putney the forwards, Caddy Lalane in the middle. And ditto for George Mason, Coach Paul Hewitt, his original starting five, including the two senior guards, Sherrod Wright and Brian Allen. They were each great in the first half. They were their leading scorers. And they go right to Sherrod Wright. He takes it inside, and Caddy Lalane blocks his shot and grabs the rebound. Caddy got it up to Chaz Williams all oh. the way. He had it blocked by Eric Copes, but a rebound by Caddy Lalane, and Caddy travels. So one block begets another. Caddy Lalane had it on one end on Sherrod Wright, and then Chaz Williams got rejected by Eric Copes on the other. Yeah, and that's a tough one. Caddy just came up with a loose ball and you know tried to put it on the floor. A little bit of a shuffle of the feet. 
But UMass gets a stop, doesn't take advantage. George Mason still leading by 10, 30 seconds into the second half in the visiting green uniforms. Copes gets the pass from Marquise Moore, banks it in over Caddy Lalay. And now it is 44-32. Eric Copes and the Minutemen turn it over. Inbounds pass got away, and it's stolen at midcourt by Brian Allen. UMass just looks stuck in the mud. Copes against Caddy Lalane again, takes him to the right baseline. A fadeaway over Caddy is good. The lead is 14, 46, 32. I'll tell you, Tim, those guys are just battling down there. Yeah, and that's the difference in the game right there. George Mason varying their looks. They're getting more inside than UMass right now and go right to their big guy for a couple buckets early. Copes with two baskets over Caddy Lalane, the first four points of the half, 46 32. Three pointer Sampson Carter, no good right corner. Rebound tipped, out of bounds by George Mason. Jalen Jenkins could not hold on to it. Sampson Carter missed the open look, 18 43 left. Well, we were talking about how important the start of the second half was. Right now, it's the Patriots extending the lead. Derek Gordon to trigger the inbound with a fresh 35. They find Chaz Williams in the left corner. Williams to Putney at the top of the key on a reset. He'll lob in for Caddy Lalane. Had the seal off, made the catch. Layup blocked again by Copes. Got it back. Shot blocked again by Copes. And a rebound this time by Copes. It's this guy, Eric Copes, dominating the first minute and a half of the second half. By my count, three blocks and two field goals. 46-32, George Mason. And they have the ball back. Wow. Marquise Moore at the top of the key. It's a high screen from Jalen Jenkins. And now over to Brian Allen on the right wing. Around a screen by Copes. Allen to the foul line, raises up, open jumper. Softly off the rim, no good. Tipped in by Copes. Who is this guy? Hey, Coach needs a timeout. Timeout, Derek Kellogg. Copes with six points and three blocks in two minutes to start the half. And George Mason blows it open. It's 48-32. Yeah, and really, Copes just a man on the block right now on both ends of the floor. He scored six points to start the half for the Patriots. And he's really outplaying Caddy Lane right now. We'll take the timeout with the Minutemen. 48-32, 17-59 on the clock. A 16-point deficit for UMass. And we'll be back with more second-half action after this. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud new partner of Learfield Sports. George Mason, a big man, Eric Copes, C-O-P-E-S, a junior from Philadelphia. Started today's game averaging only three and a half points per contest. Well, he just scored six points in two minutes. He also blocked officially one shot. I had him for maybe another one or two. And that last tip in off the miss by Copes forced Derek Kellogg to call timeout with George Mason holding now its largest lead of the game at 16. 48-32. Yeah, Derek Kellogg going to take Caddy Lanine out of the game, going to bring in Maxi Esho. So a smaller lineup in there, but just trying to make some kind of adjustment to get this game going back in UMass's favor. It wasn't working with Lanine in there. Copes was beating him up inside. And, well, George Mason, 26 to 12 in points in the paint, really outplaying UMass down low. And an inbound out of the timeout, bringing in Maxi Esho was the only change for Coach Kellogg. UMass looking for its first points of the half. It's Derek Gordon dribbling on the perimeter with the left hand. Gordon goes to Putney right wing, studies and shoots a three. It hits the front of the rim, no good. Rebound Sampson Carter, though, and he's fouled trying to go back up. He'll get a couple of shots. Putney the miss, but Sampson Carter on the cleanup. Got fouled by Marquise Moore. And I, I don't know if I love UMass's shot selection coming out of the half. They've taken a couple more from long range, threes against that zone. Luckily that time. Sampson Carter outworks everyone on the baseline and gets a putback opportunity and makes misses his first free throw. Sampson is 0 for 3 at the line. The Minutemen are now 3 of 8 as a team. Sampson Carter is normally very reliable at 77% on the season before tonight, but he's 0 for 3. Now he gets one to bounce in. So the first point of the half for UMass comes on that. 48-33 is the lead for George Mason with 17-40 left. And UMass going to go with a 1-2-2 zone with Maxi up top. Try to get a stop here against George Mason. Derek Gordon kicks Jalen Jenkins' pass on the perimeter there. Playing in that new defensive alignment. Paul Hewitt brings in a shooter perhaps to respond. He brings in Patrick Holloway off the bench. Guy who hit a couple of three-pointers in the first half for the Patriots. UMass in the home white, George Mason in the visiting green. 
Minutemen looking for their 20th win of the year, but they'll have to come from 16 behind in the second half to get it. Gerard Wright flashes to the top of the key and finds Jenkins in the high post. He attacks, had it blocked by Sampson Carter on the shot, but out of bounds. Only eight on the shot clock. Good hands by Sampson. Yeah, UMass got to have to be more active. They got a smaller lineup. They're playing that zone, so you got to be quick and active to the ball, try to force a couple turnovers, make it difficult on the Patriots. Brian Allen will trigger the inbound baseline underneath, finds Copes for a two-point jumper. It spins out, offensive rebound, put back by Sherrod Wright, blocked out of bounds by Putney. Well, the Miniman finally got a stop as Eric Copes finally missed one, but Miniman couldn't get the board. Sherrod Wright, the guard, snuck in. So it's a fresh 35 after that for the Patriots on the Putney block. Allen inbounds again, up 15. 48-33 George Mason as we approach 17 minutes to go. On the perimeter, Holloway got freed by a Copes screen. And now Jenkins swings it to the right wing for Sherrod Wright. Wright taking it at Esho to the rim. He's fouled and banks it in. Sherrod Wright gets the end one, and it's now a 17-point lead. Sherrod Wright with his first points of the half. And really, George Mason just doing a great job with execution in the half court. Out of, out of bounds that time to get Sherrod Wright in a pick and roll situation with Jalen Jenkins. UMass commits a little bit too much to the roll, and Wright gets a chance to attack the hoop. George Mason just doing everything right right now. Except make that free throw. Sherrod missed. 17 point lead remains, rebound Putney. Chaz Williams brings it across midcourt. Sherrod Wright, one of their senior leaders with 11. He got into double figures with that basket. First Patriot to get there. Driving Sampson Carter to the rim. Shot off the backboard, no good. Rebound by Gordon, though. He'll reset with Putney on the right wing. And out of Williams, who's open for a three. It's short by Chaz. Rebound knocked to the corner, saved by Sampson Carter. Third chance on the possession for UMass. Carter to Williams. Underneath, wide open Esho. Had it knocked out of his hands going up. But a foul on Patrick Holloway, and Esho gets two shots. Thought a late whistle there maybe by Paul Fea, but the call goes UMass's way. Yeah, two nice, shots for Maxi too. Yeah, nice find by Chaz. Chaz kind of got the ball on the baseline, tried to help out Sampson Carter, who'd given up the dribble and a good cut to the basket by Esho. Holloway get in there in the last minute, tried to knock it away, but he's getting, getting excuse me, get a couple free throws, but UMass continues to miss. Maxi misses that first one. I'll tell you guys, it's. It's been about as quiet in this building as it's been all year. It's, uh, I think we need a little, little boost here maybe by the fans to get the team going. Maxi's second free throw is good. He makes one out of two. UMass still without a field goal this half. They trail 50 to 34 with still 16 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. Here comes George Mason across midcourt with Brian Allen. He'll find Holloway right wing. Holloway had the pass knocked away by Esho. Saved at the foul line by Jalen Jenkins, though. Shot clock never reset. It's at 17. And now Brian Allen has it back near midcourt. There comes some noise from the crowd as Allen steps back on Maxi for three. It hits the back of the rim, over the backboard, and out of bounds. So Allen on the miss will give it back to UMass when we come back. There's one stop. You're looking for things to build off. At least that's some kind of foundation. UMass trailing by 16, 50 to 34, with 15, 57 to go. We'll return with more second half action after this. This is the UMass Sports Network. A proud new partner of Learfield Sports. Students can live, learn, and play. We understand complex student housing challenges and deliver holistic long-term solutions. Visit us at Corbius.com. Tim and Jason. UMass 0 for 7 from the field this half. They have made a couple of free throws at least. <laughs> so they have two points in the first four minutes. But at this moment, nothing offensively is going well. Yeah, and, and luckily for them, it hasn't gone worse. This lead could have ballooned a lot more for George Mason if they hadn't missed the last couple buckets. And UMass was able to come up with some stops and really have found no way to figure out. And it's not all going to happen at once. They just got to buckle down, and this crowd's got to get into it and get these guys going and see if we can cut the 16-point uh, lead in half or maybe at the 8-minute uh, the, uh, or 10-minute mark. Samson Carter from Chaz Williams takes it into the middle of the lane, got to there the rim, Samson and he banks it in with a right hand, Samson Carter. An aggressive drive, finally a field goal for UMass in the half. On the other end, Copes falls down trying to catch a pass, but he regains possession in time to call timeout. Timeout, George Mason. Heads up play by Eric Copes. Their starting big man who's been awesome in the opening four and a half minutes of the second half. That was a heads up play to call the timeout. We'll keep it here with 15.38 left. It's 50 to 36 now after Samson Carter's basket. 
UMass gets a little variation in the offense that time. Carter could have taken a wide open three, instead put it on the deck, got to the hoop and finished. Sampson Carter having a nice bounce back game here. He's got 10 points now, the first minute man in double figures. And UMass almost forces a turnover. Copes was lucky. He was backpedaling that pass, came to him, he dropped it. Luckily for him, he fell on the ground and it came right back to him before Putney or Williams could get to it. But it forces the Patriots to burn a timeout. Coming up on Saturday night, UMass Hockey plays its penultimate home game of the season. They host Northeastern at 7 o'clock. That's Saturday night. Again, one of two remaining home hockey games for John Micheletto's team. Hope to see you here at Mullins. Basketball's on the road Saturday. Afternoon game at George Washington. GMU inbounds. They go right back inside to Jalen Jenkins, who traveled on a spin move. Posting up on Maxi Esho, Jalen shuffled his pivot foot, and Jenkins turns it over. And here we go, guys. Minutemen yep. starting to string together had, a couple yeah. stops. We had, a, I think, our entire donor uh, tables down here, Josh, helping the ref make that call. Pretty it obvious. The, it was the right call. Yep. Jalen Jenkins turned over. Here comes Chaz Williams trailing 50 to 36. 15 minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Williams harassed by midcourt. Sherrod Wright is on him. Chaz now gets around him and Allen to the rim. Layup got blocked, though. No foul. Rebound by George Mason. Chaz got met with two or three green shirts. Now Allen the other way. Floats it up in the lane. That shot bounces in. Brian Allen. And the lead is back to 16, just like that. 52-36. 15 minutes to go, and Brian Allen with nine. Here's Trey Davis. Davis to the lane. He got knocked to the ground and fouled as he was trying to pass the ball. Be a non-shooting foul against the Patriots, and they picked up Patrick Holloway. Yeah, one of those tough four-point swings there. Chaz had almost a wide-open layup, found a little crease between a couple of green shirts, couldn't convert the layup, and they come back down. Allen throws in a little floater, gets a little home court roll. Chaz for three off the inbounds pass, no good. Rebound put up by UMass and a foul. Samson Carter, yeah, he was again on the glass, crashing on Chaz's miss. And he'll go to the line for two more with 14.50 left. Sampson, the, the redshirt senior, single-handedly trying yeah. to keep him in it right now. That's his really third really great rebound for the last minute and a half. Sampson Carter's only made one of his four free throw attempts thus far tonight. His team trailing by 16. Yes, that is the correct score here at the Mullins Center. First free throw here is up and good. Sampson Carter with 11. He's the only UMass player in double figures. Also five rebounds. He's four of six from the field, including a three-point made. One more for the redshirt senior. Hit nothing but cotton on each. And now it's 52-38. Chaz Williams is going to get a break here. He's been limping a little bit since that last missed layup. Chaz is going out with a hand on his back. Right around the, the hip, actually, on the left side, lower back. So Trey Davis and Derek Gordon are the guards. UMass sets up full court press after the free throw made. George Mason beats it again, though. Marquis Moore all the way. He'll get the bounce pass to Copes. Now back to Allen. Allen shot, no good. In the lane. Rebound out of bounds off of the Patriots. Touch last by Copes. I thought that Allen would have an easy shot, but it was Samson Carter who put a hand in his face. Now UMass press sped him up a little bit. Now UMass is going to go back in the attack. Trey Davis across midcourt, all the way to the rim. Nice. Shoots hey. it up and in. Trey Davis. Now it's 52 to 40. Still 14 and a half minutes to go. His first two-point makeup of the night. Full court press beaten easily. Jalen Jenkins all the way to the rim. Knocks over Samson Carter. And you heard the call. Offensive foul taken by Carter. He got planted in the lane. And it's a turnover by Jalen Jenkins. Well, George Mason trying to get aggressive. They break the press and try to attack it, but not a good play by Jenkins. Stamps and Carter had him lined up. He had his teammate wide open. He just had to kind of dish it off there and, you know, get out, get out of the way. 52 the to 40. Trey Davis back to Carter at the top for three. It's off the back of the rim. Rebound Esho, and he's fouled by Jenkins. Maxi had the box out at good position on Jalen Jenkins, who just got his third foul. He had the offensive foul moments earlier. Max Yesho with a good offensive board after Samson Carter's three-point miss. And in a minute inbound. The way it's going for Samson, thought it was going in. Good play by Yesho. Samson Carter back to Davis on the left wing with 14 minutes remaining. Some energy coming from UMass. Davis crossing over Moore. Two-point jumper blocked by Moore, but right back to Trey. He floats it up. Missed again. Tip up. No good by Yesho. A fourth chance. It's Putney. 
Putney shot. That's no good. Rebound Copes for George Mason. I'm not kidding. Four misses on that possession. Davis missed twice. Esha missed a tip. Putney missed a putback. Still a 12-point deficit for UMass. Driving Holloway to the rim, and he banks it in. That's a big four-point swing as Patrick Holloway hits, and it's 54 to 40 with 13 and a half minutes left. Yeah, a couple of those swings, despite UMass playing with more energy now, just missing layups, giving up buckets on the other end. Esho driving, got fouled on the way in on the shot that came up short. So two free throws for Maxi with 13, 19 left. And you might notice it because, well, I'm saying things a lot quicker. <laughs> UMass has really picked up the pace of its offense here. And, and, you know, you're going to give up a couple buckets if you do pick up the pace and start going up and down the way they are. But they have to start converting on the other end. They're missing a lot in close. I mean, this could be a, an eight-point game if they made a couple layups. And Maxi misses short on the first free throw. UMass now 50% tonight at the line, 7 of 14. Esho is 1 for 3. That's his only point of the game. Yeah, and, you know, getting some offensive rebounds, attacking the hoop a little more. If you're getting to the free throw line, you got to start converting these things. You're leaving a lot of points on the board. and They're going to go a little bigger now, bring Caddy Lane back in. Caddy Lane comes in for Putney. 13-19 left. UMass trailing 54-40. Second free throw is good by Maxi Escho, so he hits one of two. UMass trails by 13. Trailed by 10 at halftime, and by as many as 17 here. Steal by Trey Davis on the inbound. Oh! All the way to the rim. Scoop is good by Trey. The full court press really bothering George Mason for the first time. 54-43, now they beat it though. To the front court comes Brian Allen with 13.05 left. Now Trey Davis has a couple of hoops in the last minute, minute and a half. Now Marquise Moore at the top of the key. Gets the pass to Guyani Cheech. And he drives, floater up, no good to Guyanicic, but it's tipped in by Copes. Eric Copes with eight points this half off of Marco Guyanicic's miss. 56-43 with 12.40 left. Another offensive rebound for the Patriots. Now Esho, cross-court pass, got tipped out of bounds dangerously by Brian Allen. Maxi threw that all the way across, and it could have been a steal and a layup for Allen had he kept it in bounds. Yeah, Guyanicic came in. Give him some fresh legs. He threw a pass right away out of bounds, or right away to Trey Davis, and he got the layup, and then it forced him to take a tough shot. Guyani Chichi missed it, and Cope's just cleaning up the mess. UMass gets a stop. These offensive rebounds starting to really hurt him. George Mason leading by 13. UMass into the high post, Esho, with 12.25 left. He drives at Moore, banks it up, banks it in over the smaller Marquis Moore. First field goal for Maxi, and it's 56-45. 12-15 left, and Guyani Cheech beats the press. Finds Holloway wide open for three. It's good. You can't leave him open. His third three of the night. He's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. 59-45, just like that, a 14-point lead again. 12 minutes to go. Inside Carter to Caddy Lalane. The catch, one dribble, and a right-handed slam dunk. Good entry by Carter to Caddy. 59-47 is George Mason's lead with 11.50 left. Now Holloway beats the press this time. Goes all the way, lobs it up, in and out by Holloway from five feet, and it's out of bounds off of George Mason. Johnny Williams, who had just checked back in for Copes, knocked it out, and it'll be UMass ball. They trail by 12 when we come back. UMass starting to get it sped up, but we're still only back to that halftime deficit. They're gonna trail by 12. Uh, certainly got to feel like the game going in their favor. Got it going up and down. More second half action after this. 59-47. Patriots lead. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud new partner of Learfield Sports. Remain with you statewide and nationwide on the Atlantic 10 Digital Network. Andy Bukowski, our flagship producer. Pat Stein is the director on the television production. Fans, join us at the Barclays Center next month in Brooklyn for the upcoming Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship. The tournament running Wednesday, March 12th through Sunday the 16th at the beautiful new home of the Brooklyn Nets. All right, so if you want to sit with UMass fans when you come to those games, buy your seats through the UMass box office. Make sure you're sitting with the friendly UMass section at the Barclays Center by buying them through the box office, one 866 tix or online at umassathletics.com, or you could come right here in person and buy them from our good buddy, box office manager, Sean Quinn. But again, March 12th through the 16th, it's a great event. 
And if you're going to come to Brooklyn, sit with the UMass fans and buy the tickets through the box office. Minuteman inbounding there after Holloway had missed a shot. UMass trying to come back from an earlier 17-point deficit. Well, you know they can do it, and you know, kind of the trend is they're down 12, but still a lot of time on the clock, 11.41 to go. So if they can cut this thing to six or eight here quickly, it's a whole new ball game. Chaz Williams, Trey Davis the backcourt, Gordon on the bench. Williams has the ball with 11.35 left. The bigs are Carter and Esho in the middle, Caddy Lalane. Chaz Williams behind the line on the left wing. Gets double teamed. Guyani Cheech came out to help him. Pass to Samson Carter. He drives, banks it up, missed it. Rebound grabbed by George Mason. Marquise Moore up ahead to Brian Allen behind the back dribble to the rim. And he scoops it in with a right hand. Beautiful. Brian Allen into double figures with 11. 61 47. Trey Davis pass got tipped, but saved by Esho. Esho takes it all the way to the rim. Foul. Shot no good. He collided in the middle of the paint with the George Mason defender. Maxie's going to the line. It was Johnny Williams who he ran into. And that's Williams' fourth foul of the game in limited action. 11.06 left. The theme in this one, guys, is every time UMass has an opportunity they don't convert on, the Patriots are really making them pay at the other end. You know, UMass is pressing, and giving up some layups as Esho knocks down his first free throw. And even there, they missed a layup again right from point blank range. A little bit in traffic. And Allen comes right back down, scores a bucket. UMass can't cut this thing closer than 12. How pretty was that driving layup that Allen hit? Yeah, Chaz almost got the steal. Had to go behind the back, quite a ball handling job by Allen. He gets a layup and we're back to 12 again after a couple free throws. And Maxie finally gets a two out of two trip at 61-49 with 11 minutes to go. Marquise Moore might have gotten away with a travel as he brought it across midcourt. Pass to Allen, Allen floater, no good that time. And then a foul on Copes over the back of Caddy Lalane. That is already nine fouls this half against George Mason, and Caddy will get a one and one. With 11 minutes left, Jason and Tim. George Mason already nine team fouls. UMass has only one. Yeah, and Caddy's going to go to the line. He's got a chance to cut this thing to 10 if he can make both. You remember? Down in Fairfax. Caddy was a big factor in the second half. They ran a lot of pick and roll for him. He went 9 to 12 from the free throw line, got some dunks, and got him back in that game. But he misses the front end of the one and one. Ball tipped to the corner, out of bounds by George Mason, though. Allen couldn't save it next to the UMass bench. Another free throw miss for the Minutemen. They're lucky to get a fresh 35. And it's just it's killing them right now. Yeah, I mean, like they you can't said, make Tim, some free throws. You have this 12, 11 point lead. Love to see the Minutemen get this down to single digits. You know, get this crowd back into it and see what happens from there. 10.54 left, an eternity. 61-49, George Mason. Inbounding Samson Carter to Chaz Williams, who's been harassed tonight. He had 26 in the first meeting. Williams to Esho, left baseline drive, and he's hacked right at the rim as he tried to dunk it in athletically. Got hit and foul. They'll make him earn it at the line with 10 to 46 left. Foul goes against Copes, and that'll be his third. Yeah, good hard foul by Copes. He didn't want Caddy to get free on the baseline and get a dunk. Chaz set him up by breaking down the defense a little bit. And you can already see why. Esho is so important to this team. He sat a lot of the end of that first half with the two fouls. They kept him out of foul trouble, and he started to get a little rhythm at the free throw line. Well, he just made his fourth straight. Maxi has the last five UMass points, and it's now 61-50 as he switched it in. And you can't underestimate as they're going to come out and wipe a wet spot off the floor. You can't underestimate the fact that UMass is already in the double bonus with half of the second half left to go. Ten More than half, 10.46 to go. If they can finally start making some free throws, it's going to allow them a, a be a big reason they're going to be able to cut into this lead with the clock stop. One especially, more coming up. Especially, Esho. especially if you keep attacking the rim the way they have. He misses the second one out of two and a rebound by Copes. He stays in there with the three fouls for Coach Hewitt. And now it's 61 to 50, 10 40 left. Patriots get it to the front court, Patrick Holloway. UMass looking to get some more defensive stops. They've got it in the half court now for George Mason, where they have not been as good. The Patriots have scored better in transition. Holloway finds Marquis Moore, the freshman guard, to the middle. Kicks it out for the senior point guard, Brian Allen. Shot clock under 10 as Allen got a high screen. Allen raises up, passes cross court. Pass goes to Moore. Moore for three. And a foul called on Samson Carter, who bailed him out with 10-12 left, fouling him on a three-point shot. Samson a bit on the freshman Marquise Moore's pump fake, 25 feet from the basket. That's killer. Yeah. 
How about this, guys? Moore hasn't even taken a three of the year. That's his shooting reputation, and he gets completely bailed out. Samson Carter and UMass did such a great job locking down. I don't know why you'd call that one. I called the one on Trey before. I, I don't understand it. First of the three free throws is good for Marquise Moore. His first point of the second half and fifth of the night. Played quietly a nice game. Also five assists for the rookie. Lead is 12, second of the three. That's good. Now it's 63 to 50. You know, it felt like UMass was making a run, but if he makes this one, it's going to be a 14-point game again. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And that was really a chance right there where they cut it to 11. They were easily going to get a stop. A guy that hasn't taken one from long range all year gets three free throws and makes all three of them. 64 to 50, three for three for Marquise Moore. And the Minutemen have it. Esho, deep two-point jumper, good at the top. Maxi has seven straight UMass points, and that was maybe a little outside his normal range. About a 17-footer at 64-52. Here comes George Mason. The Patriots have let some big leads this season get away late against some of the top A-10 teams. Would that creep into their head if UMass gets a little bit closer? Copes posting Caddy Lalane on the left block. Goes to the right-handed hook shot. Got it. His 10th point of the half. He averages three points this season on the year per game, and he's had 10 in the second half. 66-52. 14-point lead again. 9.20 left as Williams drives the baseline. Nice wraparound pass to Carter. Sampson under the rim. Banks it up and in. Tough finish in traffic for Sampson. And now it's 66-54. Nine minutes, 10 seconds left. Here's a three-pointer that's no good by Brian Allen, right wing. A quick shot rebounded by Esho. Esho up ahead to Chaz Williams. He slithers through to the rim, and traffic shot is up, no good. Missed it strong, and a rebound off the hands of Allen. Williams got it back and finds Carter wide open. Three-pointer, no good by Sampson. Chaz is injured, meanwhile. Rebound by Marquise Moore, up by 12 points. Boy, Sampson won't get a better look. He had about three seconds to study the rim, just couldn't hit it. 66-54 Patriots with eight minutes and 40 seconds left. Williams still limping Chaz's defensively as he tries to guard Brian Allen, who's calling for the ball. Meanwhile, Copes takes a jumper in and out, no good. But Allen had the rebound around Chaz, who had no choice but to foul him non-shooting. Because Allen's a bigger guard than Chaz anyway, and Chaz is hurt. It's a non-shooting foul, so a good foul by Chaz. Yeah, it looked like Chaz might have taken a shot when he went in for that layup. He's just kind of holding on to his left side, maybe left hip there. And Derek Kellogg going to get him out of the game. Doesn't look like anything too serious. He just needs some fresh legs in there. UMass spending a lot of energy trying to get this game going up and down, and they still have not cut into that halftime lead of 12. Here is George Mason with a fresh shot clock inbounding and Chaz Williams going to the bench. We'll hope that he's already he's being looked at by the athletic trainer Dave McCluskey on the end of the bench. 12 point game. Marquis Moore to Jalen Jenkins driving at Maxi Esho. Took him to the rim and he's fouled by Esho on the shot. The UMass fans thought that Jenkins had pushed off on the drive but they call Esho with the body. It's fourth. And two shots for Jenkins with 8.10 left. And it's, it's a tough call because the referee that made the call didn't see all that action. Jenkins kind of pushed off a little bit with his left hand and then initiated the contact. Oh, that was a good block by Maxson, too. That's a tough one. Yep. First of the two is no good by Jalen Jenkins. Wow. Tough call. Esho with four. He has been huge has scored seven of the last nine UMass points, but has to go to the bench. Miniman bringing a freshman here, Jason, Demetrius Dyson. One more coming up. Shot is good, one for two for Jalen Jenkins. That'll make it 67-54 as we approach eight minutes to go, a 13-point George Mason lead. And now it's Derek Gordon for the Minutemen, back to Trey Davis at the top of the key. He'll find Dyson right wing. With Williams on the bench, where's the offense going to come from? And Esho on the bench, too. It's Putney in the high post. He finds Dyson left corner. Demetrius, hop step into the middle. A shot off the front of the rim, no good. Caddy Lalane fouled, though, on the putback. George Mason went for the block, but they got a piece of Caddy. And it'll be two shots for the big man when we come back. A good play. The freshman got caught, had to make a play on the left baseline, did a good job attacking the rim. He couldn't get the layup. If UMass continues to attack the rim, they can get some of those offensive putbacks, get to the free throw line, going to help them get back into this one. 
as they still trail by 13. 67-54 Patriots with 7.44 remaining. We'll return, see if the Minutemen can start a run. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud new partner of Learfield Sports. 13 points with under eight minutes left to the last place team in the conference. George Mason, 67, UMass 54. The Minutemen trailed by 10 at halftime. Came out at the beginning of the second half and fell behind by 17. And the closest that UMass has been able to muster it is within 11. And right now they trail by 13. Josh Mauer, Tim Collins, Jason Germain. This is a UMass team that has won six Atlantic 10 games. In four out of those six, they trailed at one point in the final four minutes, including that game at George Mason last month. Yeah, unfortunately for them, they, they're making a habit of coming back. They've gotten good at it, so you feel like there's always a chance, and you know, there's a chance here. They're down 13, stepping to the free throw line. Still got 7.44 to go, plenty of time on the clock, but at some point, you gotta make your move here. Caddy Lane will knock down his first free throw. You know, you gotta make a move at some point and get this thing to a six or eight point game and really start to put the pressure on George Mason. Otherwise, they're just kind of handling it right now, and every time you make a mistake, they're making a counter, and you can't cut into that lead. Caddy Lalane made the first and the second. Nothing but net for Caddy, who's been quiet tonight. That makes it 67-56, an 11-point game. Caddy with nine points and 10 rebounds. UMass sets up the full court press. Demetrius Dyson, a freshman in there in the backcourt, with Chaz Williams on the bench, apparently injured. Dribbling against Derek Gordon, Brian Allen. Allen takes him to the foul line. Gets a reset to Sherrod Wright from Eric Cope. Shot clock at 15. Wright, a deep two-point jump shot. Up and good. Wow. Sherrod Wright just nailed one. And that's going to make it 69-56. About an 18-foot swish. Back come the Minutemen with Trey Davis, approaching seven minutes to go. Putney inside, nice catch by Caddy Lalane, a dribble, puts it up and in. And now a double-double for Caddy. Off the nice finish, makes it 69-58. Seven minutes left. The inbound goes to Eric Copes. Copes in the backcourt, gets it back to Marquise Moore. He's been a good ball handler tonight, has the freshman Moore. Moore gets it over for Jalen Jenkins to the foul line. Jenkins, one more to right, who is wide open for three, and it's good. Back-to-back -back deep jumpers by Sherrod Wright, and a 14-point lead again, 72-58. Six minutes, 40 seconds left. Trey Davis left alone at the top. He'll take a three, and he makes his third of the night. Davis hits with six and a half minutes to go. Found himself wide open. He's in double figures, and it's 72-61. Back comes George Mason. George Mason's with, with only one win in the 8-10, but they've been close to several others. Driving at the rim right, had it blocked by Caddy Lalane, but he got fouled. Piece of the body there by Caddy, and Sherrod Wright, who scored on the previous two possessions for the Patriots, is going to the line. Yeah, and if, if UMass doesn't hit that three where Trey Davis calls his own number, takes a tough shot. That might have been the end of the game right there with a miss and Sherrod Wright, you know, he had come down and scored five in a row. He's got a chance to score six or seven in a row for the Patriots. And he made Dyson fall down on one play, made a jumper, and then just and made I, a dagger three. And I think Coach Kelly's got to bring Max Ashley back now. I think it's, at this point, you got to bring him back in. He's always got four fouls. First free throw good for Sherrod Wright. A redshirt senior. He was the only George Mason player honored in one of the preseason All-Atlantic 10 selections. In their first year in the league, it was a, a preseason All-A-10 guy because of the work he'd done in the CAA. Second leading scorer behind Brian Allen this year makes them both seven points in their last three possessions. 13-point lead again. George Mason going to go back to that 2-3 zone, try to keep UMass slowed down. Six minutes to go, 74-61. Sherrod Wright with 17. Here's Derek Gordon for the Minutemen. Gordon at the top of the key. Williams still on the bench. Gordon goes to Putney, left baseline. Putney drives, hop step at the rim, floats it up and in with a right hand. Good finish by Putney, 74-63. Raphael with only a second field goal of the night. Six point, nine rebounds, 535 left. George Mason in possession. They can take their time if they want. Trey Davis harassing the ball more. He gets the pass over. Brian Allen, and Allen trying to go inside for Jenkins. It's stolen by Davis. Davis coming back all the way to the rim, leaves it for Gordon. Put it up, missed the layup. And a rebound by Sherrod Wright for George Mason. 
They still lead 74-63 with 5.15 to go. Yeah, finally got a turnover and just missed a wide open layup. Derek Gordon wasn't quite ready to catch that and shoot it. Five minutes remaining. Sherrod Wright has been taking over of late. Takes a deep two, hits nothing but net again. Nine points in about the last two minutes for the senior Sherrod Wright. 76-63. And that might be the one that puts this one away. He is just in closer mode right now. And they can't find a way to stop him. Derek Gordon into the high post for Sampson Carter. 440 left. Carter right at the rim. Left handed banks it in under the arm of the big man Copes. And a timeout by Derek Kellogg. With 435 left, the lead is 11 for the Patriots. 76-65. Big night for Sampson continues. That basket gives him 16 points. 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here. There's time left. And now the question, Tim and Jason, is how can UMass start getting stops? Yeah, and they're, they're obviously starting to score the ball, and it's no question their plan of attack against the George Mason zone in the first half didn't work. They're starting to get the ball inside, get it to the high post and score the ball. You're right, but you got to find a way to stop Sherrod right. He's just on yeah, fire and, right and now. And I think, you know, and their press overall really isn't working, so they may have to just pick up at half court, you know, and, 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 and trap it. And when, as a guy's going through the hoop and he turns his head to him, run another guy at him, try to poke it from the back, and, you know, and they can't miss those crucial shots like Derek Gordon. He's got to kiss that off the glass. I mean, this is, GW's going to, or George Mason's going to score some more points, so UMass has got to, you know, be careful here. Yeah, they're going to get Chaz Williams back in the game here after the timeout. And that's good news because Chaz has been out for about the last three game minutes, I would say, with whatever that yeah, ailment was. It looks like it's a, it's a side, and I don't know if he can go. I think he's going to try to get rid of go because I think he would have been in there if he could have, but we'll see what happens. Home run pass down to Sherrod Wright, and he's going to catch it, go up, and Chaz fouls him to prevent the layup. That was coming right out of the timeout. They ran the go route, to borrow a football term. 4.33 left, it's George Mason 76, UMass 65, and a perfect pass. I think they knew Chaz had just come back in from injury and they tried to challenge him. Yep, just caught him sleeping for a minute. Usually you'd have a big man back, but Caddy Lane had taken a couple steps up with his big man Copes, and at least UMass puts him to the free throw line. Chaz caught him and got the foul. First free throw good, and now Sherrod Wright gets up to 21 points on the night. He's taking over here for the Patriots. This will be the biggest win of the season for George Mason. Leading by 12, and now one more for Wright. Ben shoots and got it again. 4.33 left, 78-65. UMass has gotten no closer than 11 points since early in the second half when they fell behind by 17. Trey Davis double teamed on the perimeter, and a reach and foul is called against George Mason. Jalen Jenkins. Well into the double bonus, the Minutemen. So two shots here for Trey. Yeah, not a good foul by Jenkins. You had him trapped, nowhere to go. No point in reaching in. You put a great free throw shooter in the line right now. Trey, hopefully you mask could knock a couple down, maybe keep this thing to 11 points, and just keep a glimmer of hope alive here. First free throw is good. Trey Davis has been actually UMass's best free throw shooter. 78% coming into tonight. Another big game for Trey, who'd been averaging about 12 points over his last five games. Second shot is up, and he hits them both. Davis now with 15 tonight. Getting close to that career high at St. Bonaventure, he said, a couple of weeks ago. And you got to hope at this point in the game, maybe you wore down George Mason enough where you could maybe get a couple turnovers, get a couple steal here. So that's the only way you're going to get back in it. They keep shooting the ball the way they have it, breaking the press. It'll be UMass setting up the full court press. 4.26 on the clock, 78-67, an 11 point George Mason lead. Inbounding against it, Jalen Jenkins to the middle. Got it to Sherrod Wright, who's doubled. Wright whips a pass over to Brian Allen, and Allen over for a third guard, Patrick Holloway. He'll bring it across the time strike. 4.15 to go, UMass trailing by 11. As Davis guards Brian Allen on the perimeter. Allen moves to his right, got right around Davis to the rim, and he banks it in. 80 to 67. Brian Allen with 13. First man in the last about three minutes, other than right to score for the Patriots. Samson Carter to Esho. He attacks the rim, missed the layup, and a rebound by Eric Copes for George Mason with under four minutes left. Patriots in control up by 13. Maxi Esho tips the outlet pass, though, of right. Esho the steal. Long hop step, and Maxi scores. That'll make it 80 to 69 after the turnover. Three minutes and 40 seconds left. 
And they're looking for an inbounder. Wright couldn't find anybody, or Jenkins couldn't find anybody, so a timeout call with 3.38 left. 30-second timeout. I think the bench was calling for it. So we'll keep it here. It's now after Maxi Esho's basket, 80 to 69, George Mason. Yeah, and that's a you know another one of those possessions where you know you're just not doing enough to get a stop. And you know Trey was doing his job, really pressuring the ball. He forced Allen to the baseline to the sideline, and then just all of a sudden, no help there. You can't be giving up a layup in the half court when you're down 11 points at home and. Luckily for them, they miss a layup down one end, make up for their mistake by finally getting another turnover. Only the eighth turnover of the game, now nine turnovers for George Mason. And really 11 points, still hanging right there. It's unbelievable that they have been unable to get this thing to single digits. Well, in that miraculous, we thought, comeback in Fairfax last month, UMass trailed by five to this team with 40 seconds left in one. They did it, Tim and Jason, by forcing turnovers. Yep. Yeah. And it like you said, Tim, this is crucial in this next minute. Somehow, some way, they've got to come up with loose balls and make buckets. Timeout ends. George Mason has two left, as does UMass. Inbounding Jalen Jenkins to the corner. Found Sherrod right, and he walks it across the time stripe. 80 to 69 Patriots. Final three and a half minutes coming up from the Mullen Center. And here is Brian Allen dribbling out back by midcourt. UMass wants to try to pressure him, so Trey Davis walks out to at least get the count going. At this juncture, down by 11 points. You can't allow George Mason to take the full 30 or 35 seconds off the shot clock. Allen still dribbling with it. Now got around the screen, had it knocked away by Esho going up, out of bounds. Last touch by UMass with seven on the Mason shot clock. Maxi almost had that taken away from Brian Allen. He just couldn't hold on to the ball. And that'll bring us to the final official's timeout of the night. George Mason about to pull perhaps the most stunning result in the Atlantic 10 this season if they hold on. The Patriots lead 80 to 69, and we'll see if UMass has another miracle when we come back. Final 310 next. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud new partner of Learfield Sports. At the beginning of the second half. Now we have three minutes and 10 seconds left. George Mason in possession with seven on the shot clock. They lead by 11 on Mullen Center Court. The Jack Lehman Court at the Mullen Center. The Patriots. Took a 10-point lead at halftime, finishing the first half on an 18-9 run, and then opened up a 17-point lead about three minutes into the second half, scoring eight of the first nine coming out of halftime. That's where UMass really had its problems. It's been back and forth since. Nathan Agency's post-game show will follow. Josh Maurer, Tim Collins, Jason Germain with you. Andy Bukowski is our producer. Hope you'll stay tuned after the game with us. George Mason will inbound the ball. They fire in to the right corner, Brian Allen. Shot clock at five as Allen raises up for a jumper and missed it short over Chaz Williams. Rebound tipped out of bounds. Last touch by the Patriots. UMass gets the stop it needed. 3.04 remaining after the Allen miss. And the window keeps closing, but you still got kind of a little crack he can squeeze through here. If you're fortunate enough to get maybe a two or three pointer here, you can finally get to single digits. UMass, I think you, the plan of attack's got to be you keep you have to keep attacking the rim. Take your chances finishing at the rim, getting fouled. You can't really settle for long jumpers at this point yet. Inbound to Trey Davis. He'll go right to the rim. Trey left-handed shot, no good, but he got fouled on it with three minutes left. He's been in attack mode. 15 points tonight for Trey, and he'll get a couple of shots. They call the foul against Jalen Jenkins, who just fouled out of the game. He'd been playing with four. They've had Johnny Williams on the bench with four for Paul Hewitt, and now Jalen Jenkins, one of their best interior presences, fouls out with three minutes left. Yeah, and he's great inside for them, and the other thing he's done is he's handled the ball a lot in the press when they beat it. He's been the playmaker a little bit in the middle of the floor, but it's a great idea by Trey Davis. Comes right out of the timeout, goes right to the hoop, and I guess you could say he's probably learned a few things playing alongside Chaz Williams, the way he attacked the hoop there. Good job by Trey. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud new partner of Learfield Sports. George Mason subs in Marco Guyanicic as Trey Davis misses the first of two free throws. He's their best free throw shooter statistically on the year. 
Had been two of two tonight, 15 points. Second shot is good off the bounce. Davis is now two short of his career high, set a couple of Wednesdays ago. 16 points. Inbounding George Mason, leading by 10. Three minutes left, they trap in the corner. Allen passes out of it back to Marquise Moore, though. Moore with a pass up to Guyanicic, and he's got it, and fouled by Max Yesho, his fifth of the game. Now one and one for the Patriots. So that'll be the seventh foul and a half against the Minutemen. So Maxi, who's been a big part of the second half offense, 11 points total. He fouls out, sending Marco Guyanicic to the line. 2.49 on the clock. When UMass got the trap they wanted out of the press, they had him buried in the corner right in front of the UMass bench. That pass was a good job by Allen, just barely getting it out of there, and then got it up to Guyanicic. Esho tried to make a play, but unfortunately got caught for the reach. So they get 20 seconds to substitute for the fouled out player, Maxi Esho, and that Derek Kellogg kind of just used as an unofficial timeout, huddled up his team. And now Guyani Cheech, who hasn't played much tonight, go to the line for the first time on the season. It's very good at the stripe, 79%, 46 of 58. No wonder Paul Hewitt got him in there. You know, got some fresh legs in there. A big ball handler, a guy that can pass over the top of the press and make some free throws. Front end, bounces in and out, he missed it. The rebound is loose. Out of bounds, last touched by UMass, and it's a fresh 35 for the Patriots. That's the story of the night. There you go, guys, in a nutshell. UMass cannot secure the defensive rebound off a missed one and one. Yeah, you, you had the box out there, you had two guys there, you gotta come up with that ball. 80 to 70 still, George Mason by 10, two minutes, 45 seconds left. Patriots inbound it, get it to Sherrod Wright, who's had a big finish and now leads everybody tonight with 22 points. He's dribbling out by midcourt, Putney is on him. Putney trying to get a five count, but the pass from Wright goes back to Brian Allen. Under two and a half minutes to go. Chaz Williams guarding Allen on the dribble by midcourt. And here's the drive by Allen. Brian Allen backs it out with 10 on the shot clock. Allen dribbling left-handed, 40 feet from the hoop. Gets a screen from Copes, lost it on the way in. Allen turned it over, a steal by Davis. Davis lobbed down the court, too far for Putney. It's off his hand, out of bounds for a turnover with 2.12 left. Yep, just missed opportunity after opportunity. You miss a box out on a free throw by a good free throw shooter. He misses it. And then, you know, can't fault Trey Davis trying to make a play. Thought he had Putney up ahead, but just a little too much heat on the pass. Still 80 to 70. Well, there's opportunities even in the last yeah. couple possessions, not getting a rebound off a free throw miss. And then a turnover by Trey Davis. Yeah, you know, the rebound doesn't hurt you because they didn't score. It hurts you because they took 25 seconds off the clock after that. Inbounding is Guyanicic. Got a return feed from Brian Allen. Allen was hit in the back by Chaz Williams. No call. And now they get it across midcourt. Pass to the corner. Holloway for three. No good on a quick shot. Rebound by Derek Gordon. Here comes UMass. Two minutes left. Davis to Williams. Chaz will pull up for three. Hits the back of the rim. No good. But then Putney is fouled trying to get the rebound. And he'll get two shots. Fouled by Copes. It's four fouls on Eric Copes, who's been huge in the second half for George Mason. 153 left. After that three-point miss by Chaz Williams, the Minutemen are six out of 23 from long range. And if I have my numbers correctly, they started five of seven, and they've gone, what is that, one of 15 since. Putney misses a free throw. One of 16 since. And now one of 16 on their last 16 threes. And now 16 of 27 at the foul line. They've missed 11 of those. And a lot of them from reliable free throw shooters normally. Samson Carter has missed three tonight. Raphael Putney's missed two. Makes the second and makes it 80 to 71. Nine point game with 153 left. Chaz Williams goes out in favor of Demetrius Dyson. Chaz has been limping for the about the last five minutes of game action. Inbounding against full court press, George Mason. Guyanicic got it into Sherrod Wright, whose pass is off the hands of Guyanicic, and out of bounds for a turnover. 149 left. And Paul Hewitt's kind of slowly having a couple of flashbacks over there. He almost passed out on the yeah. I mean, scores and, table. Yeah, you got a minute 49, Tim. I almost think you got to you got to look for a three as Trey takes it to the hole, and he's fouled on the shot. He was trying to put it up, got knocked to the ground and fouled. They're going to get Copes. And he has fouled out. Second, George Mason, a big man, to foul out. As Copes hit Trey Davis, he'll get a couple of shots. A minute 46 left. 
And it's 80 to 71, George Mason by nine. Yeah, Trey Davis keeping him in it right now. 16 points in the game. He could get 17 and 18 if he knocks down a couple. If you get a couple turnovers and keep having possessions like that, you're giving yourselves a chance. And Paul Hewitt will take his allotted 20 seconds to substitute for Copes. He fouls out with a great night. A guy who averaged three and a half points a game on the season. Had 12 points and 15 rebounds tonight for George Mason. He was their MVP. Aside from the guys who are the, the normal standouts, guards Sherrod Wright and Brian Allen. Yeah, just a, a big time game for Copes. And, you know, sometimes when you have a big win on the road, which George Mason's in a position to do right now, you got to have an unsung hero. And easily, Copes was that for tonight. 11 defensive rebounds, four on the offensive side, really gave them. A big presence inside and outplayed Caddy the lane in this one. Trey Davis, three of four at the line tonight, makes the first, and now he's one point shy of matching his career high, 17. Now it's 80 to 72. Johnny Williams, who has four fouls, checked in for Copes. Second shot is good. 146 left, 80 to 73. Guyani Cheech inbounds it to the backcourt. Brian Allen. Putney riding his hit past the board. Now Guyani Cheech. Derek Gordon knocks it out of his hands, but out of bounds. Six seconds ticked off the clock. Guyani Cheech, not normally a ball handler, the six foot eight inch guy from Serbia almost turned it over again. Well, UMass kind of quietly is on a 6 0 run here. Do they have enough time left? 139 on the clock. And right now, you feel like if George Mason can get one more bucket. Got a foul. And Inbound to Guyani Cheech. Pass goes to Sherrod Wright and now to Patrick Holloway. You got you a foul. Wanna, yeah, but you don't want to foul him though. Now it's Moore. Moore is trapped and he is fouled. And it's a one and one. 18 fouls against UMass. Freshman Marquise Moore will get it. It's a guy who has only attempted 20 free throws all season coming into tonight. Did hit three earlier. Trey Davis called him the foul. You didn't want to foul Patrick Holloway, I didn't think. He's a very good shooter. But the, the problem is, Josh, you're down seven with a minute and a half to go. It really doesn't matter at this point. You got to yeah. foul, take your chances, and get the ball back. Yeah, and they came very close there to do match. Derek Gordon almost got a steal, just barely. And he makes the front end of the one and one. Marquise Moore, another unsung hero tonight. Eight points. Five assists, four rebounds. Yeah, and how about that? six of seven from the free throw line in the game? You remember he hit that three in a row when he got fouled on the three by Sampson Carter during a big juncture in the middle of the second half. He's been big. And he makes them both. Lead is nine, 82-73. 90 seconds left. UMass inbounds to Trey Davis, who brings it right across midcourt, looking for a new career high. Shot is in off the glass. Timeout, Derek Kellogg, one of his two remaining. Have yourself a night, Trey Davis, 20 points. That'll make it 82-75, and a minute, 23 seconds still remain. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. So let's keep it here. That was a quick push. Only took Trey seven seconds to go the length of the court and bank in the two. And it's, it's amazing how similar this is to that first game. You know, UMass had a bigger hole to come out of. But these two teams have played now going on 78, 79 minutes of basketball already this year. And just very eerily similar to the first game where you're down seven and setting up your press with some time left on the clock. And it goes to show you guys, George Mason is not a one team win, you know, team there. You can tell how they've lost some games because they get a little nervous and get a little flushed at the end of the games, but they're definitely better than a one team, you know, win team in Atlantic 10 right now. Yeah, definitely. I, I, you look at what they've done, Jason, to your point, George Mason lost on the road at St. Louis in overtime. They lost at home to second place George Washington by only six. Lost at home to fourth place St. Joe's by only four. They lost to UMass at home by only one. I mean, think about it. You say probably two out of four they could have won there, maybe three. So, I mean, they definitely, uh, you got to give them credit for playing well. And they'll inbound against full court press, leading by seven. A minute, 23 left. Guyani Cheech will trigger it in, looking. Lobs it for Allen near midcourt. Brian Allen the catch. Lob up to Holloway down the court, under the rim. Pass to Allen. Allen layup is good. Brian Allen. They beat the press and got the two. It's 84-75. Back comes Trey Davis again. Davis pass for Putney, knocked out of bounds with a minute and eight left. Oh, they're going to say George Mason ball. Wow. I thought it was off George Mason. I think you, can, you might actually be able to check that one. That is reviewable in the final two minutes. Who touched the ball last? And that is exactly what the officials would do. The pass by Davis looking for Putney in the middle got knocked over the baseline. 
84-75, though, George Mason, the team that struggled to beat the press at the end of the loss to UMass last month, just had a textbook one, beating the press to get a Brian Allen layup. Yeah, and, and UMass has done a great job trying to get back in it, but just comes down to the game is a full 40 minutes. Yeah, it looked like it was off of George Mason. And you like just you don't have enough to do it in the last couple. Yeah, minutes. we're looking at a replay. That's what Jason's referring to. Hit it off. It's either Guyani Cheech's hands of George Mason or Raphael Putney, but I think you're right. I think George Mason hit it last. And I don't think I don't think Putney went off of Putney's hand or who's that standing out of bounds? That looks like looks like right. it, it almost went off either Putney's knee or Moore's hand. It looks like when you look at it a couple times, Moore might have tipped Moore's it out. Hand. Yeah, not Guyani Cheech, Marquise Moore. The question is, is there a conclusive enough angle that the officials have to overturn this? It's going to be a nine-point lead with a minute and eight left for the Patriots. And either UMass ball or George Mason ball underneath the basket at which UMass is shooting. And you'd think they, if they're looking at the same angle as us, they'll keep looking at the same one. You'd think they'd maybe be able to look at an underneath angle from underneath the hoop. Wow. They're going to keep it with George Mason. It must be a, a matter of not conclusive evidence because it looked like it's pretty clearly on Moore's hand. Well, they may not. This is not a fully televised production. They may not have had another angle available. Yeah. George Mason inbounds up by nine after that turnover. Pass into the corner for Moore. Now to Guyani Cheech. He gets out of it. Pass across midcourt. Sherrod right. Right at it. Knocked away, but a foul by Demetrius Dyson. It looks certainly like a foul on Demetrius with a minute and one left. Sherrod Wright going to the line with his team leading by nine. Yeah, George Mason looks like they're going to be able to salt this one away. Wright has a chance to make a couple free throws, put it back to double figures, and they're going to enjoy this one. You know, a score that's going to shock a lot of people when they look at that scoreboard at the end of the night. UMass dropping quite possibly its first home game of the year where they've been so good here at the Mullen Center. Yeah, this is going to be a shocker if it holds. To make it a 10-point lead, Sherrod Wright is 1-1. One one. He missed the front end. Offensive rebound by Marquise Moore. And the Patriots just wanted it more than UMass tonight. That's it. If you get a couple of rebounds off, 1-1 one one free throw misses in the final few minutes to seal the win, that just shows you. One team wants it more than the other. Minutemen now foul again. This time they foul Brian Allen. It's two shots the rest of the way. 52 seconds left, Patriots lead 84-75. So let's talk about what this loss does to UMass, which is still going to have a great 19-5 record. And they'll fall to 6-4 in the Atlantic 10. Here comes the first free throw for Brian Allen. It's up and good, his 16th point. They have to go to George Washington on Saturday, and George Washington has been one of the best teams in the league all year. So suddenly that game, which looked like a dicey proposition to begin with, takes on added importance, Jason and Tim. Yeah, and, and you know, you, you had a position at the night, start of the night where if you won this game, you'd be in third place, tied for third place with the loser of ECU, George Washington. Now you're going to be dropping down toward the middle of the pack. Both free throws good, 11-point game. Pass Trey Davis to Demetrius Dyson. He'll lay it in with 45 seconds left. Derek Kellogg calls his final timeout. So the freshman Dyson. Gets into the score column, but probably too little too late. 86-77. 45 seconds left. This is a full timeout, all that Coach Kellogg had left. We'll keep it here. Again, reminding you that after the game for our radio audience, the Nathan Agency's postgame show, and we'll hope to get a word with Derek Kellogg. That'll be later on in the postgame, not immediately after the buzzer. Stats, highlights, and a further look ahead to that George Washington game on Saturday. It's a 2 o'clock tip-off from our nation's capital. That on the Nathan Agency's radio post-game show following. Josh, Tim, and Jason, Andy Bukowski in the studio, Pat Stein producing and directing our Atlantic 10 Digital Network video stream. We hope you've enjoyed it for those watching via that avenue. If you go back to this conversation we were having, Jason, about what this does to UMass, I think the biggest thing that you have to worry about now is potentially if you let this slide with tough games coming up against GW, VCU on the horizon as well, then you're in danger of losing a chance to get a buy in the Atlantic 10 tournament. Yeah, and that's what UMass doesn't want to happen. I mean, that buy is 
you know, it's, it's crucial. You know, you get that bye on Friday and you get that first win under your belt, all of a sudden you're in the semifinals on Saturday. So, you know, it, it's, it, it's, you know, one of those, I thought they'd take care of business tonight and maybe lose on Saturday. Now you got to win on Saturday, and it's not going to be easy down there. So, you know, Saturday's game now is even, is even, is even much bigger. Guyani Cheech to inbound again. Two George Mason big men have fouled out. He gets it in here to Brian Allen. It's 86-77, George Mason. And now Allen over to Marquise Moore, and he is fouled in the backcourt. Each team well into the double bonus now. Davis has had a career-high 20 points tonight. Fouled Marquise Moore. Two shots with exactly 40 seconds on the clock. You know, Tim, we talked about this before. You always, you know, when you get the conference play, try to win your games at home and grab a couple on the road. But this, this is really a, you know, this is a, uh, the loss that's going to hurt, and like I said, they got to now maybe pull one off on the road that maybe they think they're going to get. Yeah, I mean, the, the good thing is, as the first free throw goes in for Moore, and that's Moore's 10th point of the night, you know, you're fighting for that top spot in the league. The good thing is, you're playing three of the top teams left St. Louis, VCU, George Washington. You got them all left in your schedule. You're playing two of them at home in St. Louis and VCU. And then you feel like you got some winnable games other than those three, you, you, but you got to go to Dayton still. You gotta go to Duquesne and you got Rhode Island at home. So you got a tough schedule ahead in your last six. Both free throws good by Moore. It's an 11 point lead again for the Patriots with 35 seconds left. Samson Carter raises up for three. That's no good at the top. Rebound defensively by Marquise Moore. Demetrius Dyson fouls him with 31 seconds left and Moore is going back to the line. Freshman with an 11 point, five rebound, five assist night. 31 seconds left, 88-77. Most of the fans heading to the exits. It'll be the first loss at home this year for UMass. They were 10-0 in home games. 9-0 at the Mullen Center. And this is to the last place team in the conference. George Mason, the newcomer to the league. Moore misses the first free throw. But a team that had been getting closer. They had a nine game losing streak snapped. In those nine game consecutives that they lost a lot of close ones to good teams then they finally won at Duquesne Saturday they carried a lot of confidence in here tonight second free throw good it's a 12 point game Trey Davis on the drive to the corner Dyson three pointer in the left side rattles in that'll make it 89 to 80 with 23 seconds left then George Mason inbounding against the press again fired in to Brian Allen Guyana Cheech does and Demetrius Dyson fouls him and Brian Allen gets two shots now with 22 seconds left. And, you know, kind of the, the more surprising thing to me is you felt like you just were kind of getting things back together. You, you beat a, a pretty good LaSalle team at home. You survived on the road against URI in that rivalry game, and you kind of had your confidence back. You, you felt like they were feeling good and kind of getting things going again, and you just kind of come and put up a dud here at home in a game where you, you really struggle shooting the ball from long distance. You miss 11 free throws. And you know, you get beat up a little bit on the glass, you know. It's uh, it's a little bit alarming, but the good thing is you got a lot of games left to go. You just gotta try to continue to, to find that confidence again. Allen makes the first free throw for the 90th point of the night for George Mason. I think another thing that's alarming to him, aside from the offensive rebounds that George Mason got, George Mason's not statistically a great scoring team. Yeah. Well, they scored 87 against UMass last month and now 91 tonight. 91 to 80 as Allen makes them both. He's got 19. Sherrod Wright leads the way with 22. 15 seconds left. Trey Davis with one more turnover as he throws it into the backcourt and it goes straight out of bounds. 12 seconds left. How much of this was UMass coming out flat tonight and how much of this was George Mason taking it from them? Well, it, it was all of it. UMass came out flat, you know, George Mason came in with a good game plan. You gotta credit this team, you know, they they could have hung their heads. They were one and eight in the league. Paul Hewitt kept these guys together. He knew they were a better team than that. He brought them in here, made them believe they could win. He's kept it together all year, despite only now two wins in the league. And, you know, they came in here and won it. Inbound to Marquise Moore, UMass electing to foul no more. Moore will dribble out the remaining seconds as the buzzer sounds. Well, it's certainly the most disappointing loss of the year for the UMass Minutemen. It is a 91 to 80. To be honest with you, shocking defeat by the last place team in the conference, George Mason at the Mullen Center. And a loss that, well, we'll see. UMass can go one of two ways after this one. You can use it as a kickstart, to get your mojo back, or hopefully it doesn't go in the opposite direction. 91 to 80, the final, and we've got the Nathan Agency's post-game show for all of you on the radio audience. We hope that you'll stay here. 
Now Derek Kellogg will go to the locker room first, and after he addresses his team, we anticipate that we'll be able to speak with him afterwards. We'll also have highlight stats and Andy Bukowski's look at the out-of-town scoreboard. For those of you watching on the Atlantic 10 Digital Network, we thank you for watching tonight's production and hope that you've enjoyed it. 91-80, George Mason stuns UMass. And we'll be back with more after this. This is the UMass Sports Network, a proud new partner of Learfield Sports.